This lesson deals with network functions of one and two port circuits. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 11, starting on page three. Given a circuit in the zero state, let's define a pair of terminals and label the voltage across that is V of S and the current entering is I of S. Then we can define a driving point impedance, Z of S, that relates the voltage and current to this pair of terminals, which we're gonna call a port, in the following way. We could say that Z of S is V of S divided by I of S. Now we've had other terms for this before. We've called this input impedance and equivalent impedance. Extending this idea to a pair of ports, we could then define the following. I'll call the voltage here V1 of S and the voltage here V2 of S, and I'll define the currents as entering the two port. And again, it's a circuit in the zero state. We'll define a transfer function as the ratio of outputs to inputs. There's four possible combinations. We could define the output voltage over the input voltage, call that a voltage transfer function, say call it T of V. We could talk about the current I2 divided by I1 as another transfer function, but for current, and call that say T sub I. We could talk about having a current out over a voltage in, that would have units of admittance, so we'll call that a transfer admittance, say call that T sub Y. And lastly, we could take a voltage out over a current in. That would have units of impedance, we could refer to that as a transfer impedance, we'll call that T sub Z. Let's do an example. Consider the circuit where I've got an R and C in parallel and an R and C in series. I'll call this combination Z1 and this combination Z2. My input V1 of S and I'll call my output V2 of S. Can you find the input impedance seen by V1 of S? Can you find the transfer function V2 divided by V1? That'd be a voltage transfer function. And could you locate the poles and zeros of this voltage transfer function if R1 is 10K, R2 is 20K, C1 is 100 nanofarads and C2 is 50 nanofarads? Let's find the impedance looking in. What's this gonna be the series combination of Z1 and Z2? Now our impedance on the previous page had a capacitor and resistor in parallel. Let's take their admittances and add them and then take the reciprocal. So the admittance of the capacitor is SC1 and the conductance of the resistance is one over R1. So multiply through by R1, you get R1 over SC1, R1 plus one. And then Z2 was a series combination of a resistor R2 and a capacitor C2. So the impedance would be R2 and then one over SC2. Common denominator here would be SC2, so multiply this by SC2, and then we're gonna add one to it. Then ZN would be the driving point impedance looking into our circuit. Let's find a common denominator of SC1R1 plus one times SC2. So we'll multiply this by SC2, so you get R1, SC2, and then multiply this times this. We're gonna get SC1R1 plus one times SC2R2 plus one. This first term here is pull out the S in front. I get S times C2R1, then I get an S squared C2, R2, C1, R1, and then I get SC2, R2 times one, and I get one times SC1, R1, and I get one times one. Let's pull together the things that multiply S squared. We'll have C2, C1, R1, and R2. Things that multiply S, we've got this term, we've got this term, we've got this term. So here's C1, R1, C2, R2, and then C2, R1, and then we just have a one left over. This is our driving point impedance looking into our terminals where V1 is connected. Next, we're asked to find the voltage transfer function. Just be a voltage divider of Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2, but Z1 plus Z2 is our Zn. All we gotta do then is take the reciprocal of Zn and multiply it by Z2. So we'll take our last result and just flip it over. And this just turned over, numerator becomes denominator, and the denominator becomes a numerator. And then our value for Z2 we also found, and that was equal to, on top here, SC2R2 plus one divided by SC2. These cancel. And I wind up getting this term times this term divided by our denominator. You can multiply this out or just leave it as it is. You've got the separation of the zeros. Here we got this common denominator. We'll have to find the roots of this. Let's plug some values in. So C1 was 100 nanofarads, R1 was 10K, C2 was 50 nanofarads, and R2 was 20K. Looking down here, 50 nano times 100 nano, 10K times 20K, 100 nano, 10K, 50 nano, 20K, 50 nano, 10K. This turns out to be 10 to the minus three. This turns out to be also 10 to the minus three. This term multiplying S squared turns out to be 10 to the minus sixth. From here that's multiplying S is 2.5 times 10 to the minus three, and then we just have a one at the end. We next need to find the poles and the zeros. Now we left this factored, so we've got the zeros. Lastly, let's multiply through to get the highest powers of S with just a one coefficient. So I need to pull out a 10 to the minus six from the denominator, and then a 10 to the minus three and a 10 to the minus three. Dividing this by 10 to the minus three, I get S, and one over 10 to the minus three is 1,000, and the same is true over here, that, that's these two terms. Pulling out a 10 to the minus six, I have a one. Dividing this by 10 to the minus six, I get 2.5 times 10 to the three, and then one over 10 to the minus six is 10 to the sixth. Let's have a scalar in front that's equal to one. 
Now we need to find the poles, so let's find the roots of the denominator. Using the quadratic formula, I have minus 2,500 plus or minus 2,500 squared minus 4 times 1 times 10 to the 6th divided by 2 times 1. That's minus 2,500 plus or minus, this turns out to be 1,500, and then divided by 2. My voltage transfer function then is S plus 1,000 squared over S plus 2,000 times S plus 500. I have a double zero at s equals minus 1,000 radians per second, and I have two simple poles, one at minus 2,000 radians per second and one at minus 500 radians per second. And these are some network functions of one and two port circuits.